The forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Okay, welcome back to Queen of Embers. I'm your Game Master, Daniel Fox. This is the game, the cult, people who made Zweihander, Mongoge, and Queen of Embers. Awesome. Um, I think we're on episode 40... Is it 42? Did we record 41 yeah, last week? Yeah, we only had one episode last week. That's right. Long. Yeah, so... Really and meaning I, of life, the universe. No. That's right. We did a full recap of chapter, of Act 3, because actually we're starting Act 4... Tonight. Oh. Yeah. So we did our big, we, we, we tested out the meeting, the meeting owl, right? Yep. Uh, people, by the way, I don't even tell you guys this, people were really fucking stoked about it. Awesome. They're like, we can actually see your faces and interacting. Yeah. Even though it's 720p, <laughs> 30 frames per second, people still appreciate that. Hopefully meeting owl will do a 1080p version. I've tested a couple other cameras in the meantime. They're just not the right type. This is perfect. This answers for so many things. We have to drop a bunch of cameras in. As we discovered two weeks ago, there's no way to put cameras in here without being just distracting. We said we love you, Al. <laughs> we love you, Al. Well. That's <laughs> right. Meeting Al, please uh, Free sponsor us. That'd be Free. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Free things. Yeah, like another Meeting Al for other live stream games that we'll use for B2C uh, because you're a B2B company. Um, cool. So um, let's, uh, let's just dive right in. Uh, so, what happened, not last week, but the, in this case, well, I guess, actually, people probably are listening to this as of last week, because it's, the previous episode was unnumbered. So, it is episode 41. 42. What do you mean, the previous episode no, was unnumbered? 41? The, was, did we name it that way online? Yeah. I don't think we did. I think we did, I don't think we numbered it correctly online. Well, it's definitely episode 41, but I don't think we numbered it. We took two videos. One was the recap, and one was uh, the actual episode. Oh, you're right. We did. Oh, you're absolutely right. You're yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Recap. Okay. Cool. So recap was not numbered. No, recap was unnumbered. <laughs> okay. Unnumbered. We'll figure it out. It so episode, episode thirty. No, episode it's episode forty yeah. something. Uh, so let's go. just dive right in. So what happened last game session? I believe right now we're definitely. We started with the casing. Yeah, we did. did. Yeah. And Harper did his best to move those oxen. But man, it's a lot of weight. <laughs> and man, those giant, I mean, very large creatures are tall and fast. <coughs> so, uh, uh, mostly what I was doing was trying to get, the, get it to move along. What everyone else was doing was trying to keep them at bay. Uh, that's right. And uh, I believe Banneker did a good job of uh, you know, slowing them down by uh, good some enough. trick shots <laughs> of his. Yeah. Um, did a very good job of that. And some other people were taking some good old pot shots and pulling up ropes so people couldn't climb up or uh, tying off ropes so people didn't fall off. Uh, so it was a pretty concerted effort, but uh, I think four of them were able to aboard the top of the uh, Madeline. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Four of them clambered up the um, the large scaffolding all around uh, the Madeline as you were heading through a narrow pass and nearing a waterfall along the edge of the mountain, as I seem to recall. What happened from there? We... Maybe, it's, maybe it should be told from Jonathan's perspective. Mm -hmm. That kind of began. Oh, I suppose so. <laughs> so it became, I think, pretty clear uh, that uh, coming to blows or continuing the, uh, the the scuttle was not going to have uh, the desired results. That we were almost certainly going to be murdered and that our, our days were pretty numbered. So Jonathan tried a pretty risky gambit. Even he, though he wouldn't admit it, wouldn't say that he did not think that its success was 
probable or even likely, but <laughs> he used his uh, linguistic skills to be able to crudely communicate with these uh, with these men of uh, these men slash beasts and convince them that knowing of their cannibalistic nature to convince them that our meat was spoiled and that we were all fallen of some virus or sickness and that uh, to eat us would be almost certainly a, a grave consequence for them. And luckily, somehow, they were able to be convinced by the uh, by the skin of our teeth to avoid uh, being on the uh, skin of theirs. Right. So, Terran put on a little bit of a show, <laughs> the agreement, and then after all that happened, uh, they still took some of your oxen. <clears throat> that was the, the swap. <coughs> and then you came out into the vale, into the valley, and had found the Axewater River, the the the, the barrier between the roving girdle in the east and the kingdom of Aglador to the west. And that's when you brought the ship to the water, onto the axe water. And some conversations ensued that night uh, with um, Sammy Newhouse, specifically about what's below deck. So, whatever, call the details of that. Our great cauldron. Okay, well, that basically cauldron? a boiler. Yeah, most of that conversation was happening between uh, between Lisa and Sammy at first. No. Um, yeah, the, it was the cauldron, and he found that they were missing an ivory wand, is what he's calling it, which is basically the key to turn the cauldron, at least that's what he believed. Um, and then he told her that uh, Wolfgang was the one that purchased the Madeline and gave it to the Baroness as a gift. Thinking that that would cause her to owe him something. Um, because he owes Bruno Lehman, who we know is one of the leaders of a merchant's group back in... Uh, the Guiding Hand. Yeah, the Guiding Hand back in Durandal. Not just a merchant's group, they're really a political force too, right? Yeah, but their base is supposed to be their merchant group. What do we know about the, the Guiding Hand on their card? Got the Guiding Hand. You guys should come back. So there you go, there. Because I, I have the hint. There, there it is. Clues, so. uh, I wrote down that it's a mysterious group in Durindle trying to control events. We don't know whether they're siding with or against the Baroness, though. They're basically like a cabal of sorts. That's true. What else from there, Lisa? Uh, Bruno Lehman is a member of it. Uh, Gelman and Zox are believed to be members of it that are the foundry owners where the Madeline crashed, as well as Eustace Adelard is the main speaker of the group. Which we also know Eustace has become the <laughs> master of the prophet. Yes. Or was. We don't really know what happened to the prophet, right? Yeah, it's still kind of unknown. Something that... Probably we know some of his to be asked of Jonathan and his wife. Right. Yeah, we yeah. know some of the people who had to remain in Durindle, but it was rumored that some of them had departed to a different city as well. Yes, that's right. It's kind of hard to say. We don't know exactly what happened. Okay. And then we concluded the evening with uh, kind of a revelation from Jonathan regarding all of this. When he spoke of the importance of the uh, of the Madeline, not necessarily from the perspective of the prophet, but from the perspective of the world. Right. Walls do not exist anymore with this. Sieges are unnecessary. Storming a castle will be floating over the walls and That's dropping right. your men in. That's right. Or dropping Whatever. pitch barrels and a pirate shot. That's <laughs> right. I will tell you now, just above board, that there, <clears throat> when this kind of part of the story was written, I don't know if it was intended by the original author, but the way I've kind of changed it is that there's kind of a direct correlation between like Einstein's discovery of nuclear fission and the atom bomb, uh, where you know you, you're you're but in this sense, like uh, sorry, my apologies, uh, Professor Hofstork, uh, his ex explorations to understand how to take to the skies, driven by his perhaps his own hubris and curiosity, will potentially be damning for the world, 
should this come to be. So we think this is a paradigm shift, he thinks, right? That's what Jonathan said. Yeah. It's not what Hofdorf said. Hofdorf, if you remember, he's, he's oh, clearly no. mad. He's clearly mad. He, he knew, he, he'd crazy. already seen the death he had wrought. Right. Like, in his studies, in his explorations of this. But still wanted to go further. That's I right. Mean, you tried to fly without wings. We all saw how that worked. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> fly too close to the suns. Flew for a little while. Yeah. Was it Daedalus' son? You only made that mistake once. Daedalus' son, Icarus. Icarus. Icarus, Icarus yeah. yeah. <coughs> so we begin our story aboard the Madeline. Not born in the air, but born upon the axe water. A broad, lazy, muddy river. Much like the, much like the Missouri or Mississippi. Uh, the shore is clearly visible. The trees are bereft of leaves. It is very late autumn. It's chilly. You can feel the water. You can feel the wind get a brace against you. The oxen are maybe just about 40 yards out, and there's a spider web of ropes kind of along the shore where you can see Hrung Bigley. Um, and uh, we'll assume that you're on yeah, the I'll... ship. We'll assume you're aboard the ship, okay. just for purposes of role play. Um, Hrung Bigley is basically leading the oxen along shore to draw the Madeline up river to make it to Kale Tearing, because remember, there are no sails. Traditional sails in this sense. They are, are large canvas kind of sewn together things that represent the canopy, the, the, the parasol, he called it, uh, to bear it into the air. The aerostat would be the would be what is listed in the red book that's written by Hallstorf, but he's come to call it the, par uh, the parasol, as he called it. In his best uh, Red Dead Redemption voice, um, but um, yeah, you're basically being pulled up river, which is not uncommon for most trade barges. But the the great weight of the Madeline, you could f and, and it's groaning tremendously, despite the fact the waters are rough. Like there's a lot of the the whole thing seems a bit cantankerous, like it's threatening to to drown you all. It's kind of leaning to one side as well, toward the side that the oxen are pulling, unfortunately, but it bobs at times violently in the water um, as it's struggling to stay afloat. And you thought that the travel here was um, pot potentially dangerous. Being borne up in the water as far out as you are, if this thing was to sink, you'd have to swim 40, 50 yards to shore, which is not close by any means. But uh, no less, the Madeline seems to be holding it together. There's a lot of leaks down below in the galley. In particular, a lot of leaks around where the Arkwright cauldron and its snaking pipe, snakish, snaking, its snaking vents kind of go throughout the entire thing like some great spider web of iron kind of bolted together all beneath this thing. Um, and there's water that they're actually having to, you're having to carry out. You're having to work the entire time. You have to basically take water out and toss it out of the ship. It's springing leaks all over. And it's not a lot, but should you not work along the way, you will, without a doubt, this thing will sink to the bottom of the axe water. It'll, it'll be there for the rest of its age. It will require work of all of you along the way. So, to start the game out, uh, we will need to all make a an easy toughness test. Anyway, fail. I, I did. Yeah. Any crit fails? No. It is a it is a hard day's work. It is not easy. Um, you both will suffer. Um, every day you are on the ship on the water. Um, uh, Fifteen physical perils. It's hard work. You're walking up not one, not two, but three flights of stairs, and you're. Taking breaks in between, but it's just it's it's tough work. Yeah. And Can I instrument a fire line so we don't have to work this, this hard. Certainly, yeah, absolutely. You're the assumption is that you're basically trying, you're doing your best. It's right. the two of them are getting a little tuckered out, 
and they're just not quite keeping up with the rest of you. <coughs> it is it is autumn, but you can see sweat kind of along their their faces. They seem to be a little bit worn out. <clears throat> And you know you still have a few days until you reach Kael Tyrion. Fortunately, at the current rate that you're going, um, you will reach Kael Tyrion on time, meaning you'll have at least two days in the city before things are to unfold. And, uh, of course, the barrister, Rosalia, has spoken in brief about this, but she has not given you all the details yet. Sometime toward nightfall, you stop and you rest. You can feel the cold... The cold autumn air up on your face, that's very, very nice. The boat is anchored as the as the oxen come to a stop. Does it take on water while it's not in motion? No. Figures much. What's that called? Weather what's the weather stripping boats? What's that called? Caulking. Caulking. That's yeah. what I thought it was. But there's, there's, that's a, that's an actual profession. Like, that's a, a professional caulker is a real thing. Yeah. Caulking houses, caulking boats. <clears throat> Just don't ask for cock while you're at the hardware store. <laughs> that's right. They caulk. tell you. They, they tell it's you. Caulk. I know. It's a little joke, but. You know. <laughs> by the way, this episode is brought to you by Black Phillip. He's from the Vavavitch. The, the Vavavitch. Mm. Is that right? Baby bitch. Baby bitch. Um, that's right. So, uh, the, it comes to a stop. Hrung will board the boat. The oxen are near shore. You can disembark if you wish. You kind of build a fire along the edge of the water. It's fairly quiet in the woods. Um, and you have clear sight across the across the, the river from here. You can see that uh, man, the mirror, uh, the, 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 the moon, um, is is beginning to wane as it was full just a few nights, I think about three nights before. Um, and you can see the great red star field, the nebula almost that surrounds all of Mahalma, the remnants of the blood moon. Somewhere beyond those remnants, a distant burning blue star, the Leviathan's eye still watching. It almost feels that sometimes when you you, when you stare toward it, you become almost enthralled to some degree. Your mind begins to wander. You quickly turn away. Yes. You, feel, you feel yourself kind of pulled, you kind of frayed, I suppose you could say, at night. Mm -hmm. Com discomforted. A wonderful day, the barrister says as she joins you at the fire. Mm. That was a beautiful day. A little bit of a honest day's work. I'll have a fight for our lives. Yeah, I mean, I'd call that a beautiful day. We're not far now, she says. I recognize this. We shall pass by Almiran's gate soon to the west. You'll see it from the river. Uh, from there, perhaps a day still to Kael Tyrion? <coughs> I'm certain of it, she says. I'm not sure if I've ever been this far north and west. So. And the axe water runs all the way from Cauldron Lake down all the way to the south until it reaches the holy city of Rowaline. And oh, then on to well, the Bay of Mandos. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a map. It's just so I haven't actually been here, you know? Yes. The world's a pretty world wide place, isn't it? Never would have thought I would have seen all this. I started out. Well, That's just it, though. You're still, are. you're still pretty far south, ain't you? From where I come from, that's for sure. <laughs> All this is Southland. I, I should say, are some of you Rovanian? She inquires. Harper raises his hand. That's of course. Master Clavager, I know that ye are. Yep, I am. She nods. You'll forgive me. I'm not familiar with your f family's name. No, yours, she says to you. Forster. Yes. She shakes her head. She was talking about. She was talking about you, Captain Foss. Yeah, she was talking about me, Dad, the other day. Uh, you know, uh, Dismas Forster. Oh, yes, the 
the gruff soldier. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, it's kind of all of us. You, you met one, you met us all. I see, she says. No less. We are near Kael Tyrion, so if you have questions, we should best field them now. Well, as hard as the both of you were working today, Mr. Yeah. Jonathan, I'll Master Clavager. I got some questions, so. We're supposed to go to this uh, masquerade with, with you, right? That's part of it? It's from uh, what we were saying the other, other day? First, we shall come to. We shall come to the uh, Dupre Pavilion. We will keep there for our time while we are in Kael Tyrion. So the Baroness has a has a place there that we're going to stay at? A summer home, she says. Alright. There are attendants, nice. so you will be well fed and taken care of as befitting your station. <clears throat> or your duty, rather. She says. She corrects herself. What, what, is, the, what is the plan to the battle line? We shall... Well, I don't know. That's more of a Sammy question, I suppose. Do we leave this on the river? Pull, pull Wolfgang. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. My mind was turned to Wolfgang. He has been rather sick. You still not feeling well? He doesn't seem to be. Sammy was seeing to him just today. Well, I reckon I could take a look at him if, if he's, he's not... Uh... Feeling right? Is it some kind of sickness or something? Well, they don't need bandages. Sammy says as he kind of wanders up above from down below. Another girl stutter, much like um, much like Warren. Well, what what do you think of it? I think he's got something going on, something that I can't figure out. Well, that doesn't sound right. I best take a look. No, no, no. A sickness. Oh, I see what you mean. I cordoned him off in the captain's quarters. I got just the thing for that. And Warren uh, walks away. And Hold on, he says. You're not listening. Stop. Stop acting. Listen. What are you saying? The man's skin's turning all matter of gray. <sighs> Doesn't sound too good. Well, I've got the equipment to deal with this sort of thing. He kind of looks at you strangely. You're not a physician, he says plainly. I am specialized. You milk cows. There's a difference between milking cows and animal men and being a physician. You know, I milk cows back in Grawlstead. The man picks up a few things along the way. Just like you and this, this, this Arkwright cauldron, I picked up a few things too. Wolfgang said to keep your distance. Sure about this? He um, says with finality. Well... Let's think about this. Yes, Wolfgang has blamed us multiple times for trying to kill people. Maybe we should just let him be. You, something happens to him. You know what we went all through with the reek? It's not going to happen again. Not on my watch. It's not just. It's not just Wolfgang. It's everyone's in danger here. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? don't want to be known for bringing a sickness into a city. Right, and uh, it's not like we can. If he does pass, it's not like we can burn a body on a boat. Because isn't that what you do? I don't think that we should let him lapse, the barrister says, but I do see that there is wisdom in speaking to somebody who is trained in the Cambrial Arts. Are you trained in the Cambrial Arts, Master Boring? I don't reckon I reckonly know what the Cambrial Arts means, but I've been... I've been treating folk with with the reek back in the back in the city, and I picked up a thing or two, and I think I can figure it out. All right, you you do what you think is best. Okay, let me get, I, let me see to my things. I should say, Master Wolfgang will be an instrument in our plans while we are in Kael Tyrion. There is a matter of complication we have not yet discussed. Well, this the barrister we, says. We, we can discuss these complications, but I can say one thing. I don't know much about diseases, but I know I know this much about is it grayscale? 
Is that what when they turn gray and they? I haven't had a look at it. Yeah, I want to be for sure. Well, if it is that, there ain't no saving it. You know, just by leaving it alone. Well, that's for sure about anything. Yeah. So, you say you know what to do. I mean, I've known you to beat around the bush. I don't know you to straight up tell them fibs all the time. So if you if you say you can you can do something, I can take a look. I believe you. So with the captain taken care of, can we peel back this onion? Because every time you open your mouth, Barrister, there's a new complication. It's not a matter of complication. It's a matter of no, it seems what to be it's... consistent that we were supposed to drop you off, get you to the city and back. Now we're going to a masquerade ball. Now there's other factors that the captain was supposed to take care of that are going to fall on us. That, to me, is an onion unraveling. Every time you speak, we get a new job. She smiles. I understand your apprehension and appreciate you airing your grievances. <clears throat> that said, let us speak what must happen. Please. As you, un- as you already know, the Baroness attempts is attempting to secede Durindal from it's contemporary from Aglador, as its own city-state. I'm certain you can understand, given the campaign of the Bastard King, what this could spell. We know that it could lead to war. In order to ensure that it does not come to swords, perhaps to strong words, there are allegiances that the Baroness must attend to in Kaeltirian. Thus why I have been sent to negotiate uh, with a key supporter. Up to this point, at least. We understand all of that. Where have the complications come in? The Lady Gabriella R.K. is Wolfgang's sister. She is married to the Baron Clayton R.K., the lesser, the very man that we must accede to at the masquerade. Now, know that even before you stepped foot in Durendal, that this plan has been in, has begun to see itself unfold before the Dufresne agency had involved themselves. I, I will say this, while Master Wolfgang may be loyal to the Baroness, I do not believe, knowing that the, that Lady Gabriella, R.K., will not, will not be pleased with this notion. I am certain she has tried to turn her husband, Clayton R.K., the lesser, toward the other path. It also gets worse from there. <coughs> the masquerade we are to attend, we have been receiving transmissions by a raven. For some number of months, I spoke with Father Proctor Roland while we were in Hastings, and a message arrived Arrived at the time. I chose not to speak of this because I did not feel it was a good place to do so yet. There was enough complication with Lord Rental Long's sons bickering in the mountains. What's going on with the ball? I believe that... Clayton R.K. will be killed. We have it on good word that there, will, that there are assassins, specifically an assassin, who will be at this masquerade ball. The means and method of which they will dispose of Clayton R.K., I do not know. I do not feel it will probably be with knives. Which proposes another problem. Baron Clayton R.K., she smiles, uh, is a, um, forgive me, what do you call when somebody's an act of nonviolence? What's that called? Lord Clayton R.K. the Lesser, unlike his brother Sir Stanton, uh, the Red Knight, um, has, has a vow of pacifism. He was a barber surgeon for a number of years. In fact, he trained with Holmes Ellister, one of the leading members of the Cambrial Arts and Chandering, and she looks toward um, Warren as he has his doctor's bag ready. 
he himself, uh, I strongly believe uh, there will be no weapons or swords to be worn inside this ball. Now, while I must still continue unraveling this, and, I, and once we, re we get to the Dupre Pavilion, more information will certainly be revealed. But I have, I have no doubt that there will be an attempt upon Clayton Arcade's life at this masquerade specifically to cause chaos and make it look as if the Baroness's loyalties are fraying within the social circles. So, so who would take over Clayton? Who is his heir? It, that is not the important point. The important point is, is that if Clayton R.K. is not alive to support what the Baroness intends to do, she loses a chief ally. Okay. Which means that, as opposed to the cessation being a war of words and pens, it'll be a war of swords and blood, which is one thing that she wishes to avoid. So she wants to take a, a, a page out of the Bastard King's book. The Bastard King was a man of iron and blood. That is not what she intends to do. Well, but Sir but... Clayton Arcade's loyalty, he will be able to cessate the hostilities in the ministry and secure a piece of a sort for I, now. I understand the Bastard King's ways, but he is the only city-state in Aglador. And he is king no more. He is dead. That doesn't mean his offspring, the numerous I'm sure they are. Nameless bastards and fatherless children and daughters. Will you take that city? It is not... My role, nor is it yours. <laughs> nor will the king take that city. It's, it's, it's still a city-state. So, if I reckon we can get into this masquerade ball, our main objective is to make sure that everyone walks away alive. Yes, she says, plainly. Most notably... Can't just warn Clayton, him? okay. Can't you just warn Clayton and make sure that his guards are present? He already knows. Then why wouldn't he have his guards at least have swords? His guards will be there, but they will not be armed. That's ridiculous. We well, have told Sir Clayton that the Dufresne Agency, who are skilled in the ways of espionage and sussing out trouble, will be the ones to ensure that the Baron R.K.'s life is kept. Well, we have paid... Multiple times with that pound of flesh on the A moment. Um, I must say, uh, I'm getting a little old being told exactly what we've agreed to. So, you are important. servants of the Baroness, nay? The you signed your name to the paper. No. You are bound by an oath of fealty. Why would you not seek to see that she succeeds, or that she lives, or that he lives? Did you see that? Did you read that paper? I did. I am the one who wrote it. Yeah. Understand. It doesn't say nothing about swearing vows of fealty to her. It says something about getting you to her safe. Understand for a moment. I'm not saying necessarily that this is something I would be derelict in, or that I would fail to do. What I am liking to state is it becomes a bit tiresome to find out these facts later. Why were you in Durendal in the first place, my lady? Why was I in Durendal? Yes, the Dufresne Agency, she says mm -hmm. specifically. Not you, the agency you represent. The agency was there to possibly assist the Baroness and to assess the situation. And what did the, what did the Dufresne Agency tell you when you received your ravens in Hastings? Come now. Father Proctor Roland and I are close friends. He did not tell me the goings-ons of these notions, but I know that you must have reached back out to the Dufresne Agency. Yeah, Elsewise, you would not be here. I think at this moment there needs to be some kind of trust established, which is obviously not Ben. I agree. You are speaking now of knowing things that have been stated to us, stated to our specific society, that have now been shared with you, yet you failed to state when it was shared. But now bring up when you have another task for us that outstands the particular contract that we did agree to sign and that we have followed through on in this point much to the detriment of our health and or sanity i would appreciate much if you would divulge your fucking shit 
Oh lady, I understand your frustrations. I fully understand them. Know that no ask from the Baroness is so easy. Know that I am not necessarily in sync with her on all things that she wishes to do. But I know this. I know she is the best thing for Dorindel. I know she is the best thing for the Rovain Girdle. The Bastard King tried this before, and he failed. He did everything wrong. The Baroness Madeline is different. She is a kind person. She does not do this to cause war. She does this because it's the best thing for the Rovanian people. Look back to the kin strife. Look to the ethnic differences between those of the West and those of the East. She seeks not to divide, but to allow the Rovanians to finally be who they all truly are. You misinterpret my anger. Your ends are not my necessary issue, but the means have become troublesome. Then let us discuss the means of which we can attend to this. Well, you see... I have no secrets to share to hide from you, but there is a time and a place when things can be spoken of. Would you like for me to tell you this in the middle of the Dark Warriors attacking the ship? Should I have told you while we were racing through the fields of Blackfire Pass? Should I have told you when we were in the courtroom with the Baroness? Tell me. Let us have a conversation. We are not at, at, we are not at the ends of one another. We are in this together. What would I hate it? Yeah. We are well, here to see something through, and I want to work with you. Okay. Well, then, uh, if you want to, to work with us, there's a certain amount of, you know, we, we, we agree to the contract. Yes. And, and now there's, thing, there's things being added to the contract. Would you need more money? Is it as simple as that? Well, if, if some things are being added, then... Perhaps we can add some things, too. I do not think that the freight agency was so mercenary in its attitudes. Perhaps I mistook you. Well, you see, I, f I think it's kind of funny how you can add things to the contract and expect no reprisal. Master Terraman, we've been down this road twice. So what will you have? What will you have of the Baroness? What can I personally do for you to settle this, so we may move forward with what we have come here to do. If it's a matter of money, name your price. It does not matter. The Baroness will pay it. Because she knows, and she believes, that Dufresne will do what is necessary. And you would not be here if it was not ordered by your masters to see this through. I know this. You are not fools. You, were chosen, you all were chosen specifically for this. Oh. My apologies, Master Vander. You so, for sure. So, so you bring up the Ken Strife, and it, it, this is just another. And it's funny you besmirch the the bastard king, but he still owns his castle. I don't know if that's going to be the case if the king marches. Kale and you Tyrion speak of the Ken Strife, yes. and every five to ten years, Rovanians do this uprising, and it's crushed every time. And it's crushed miserably. And it's, it's, it's not the Baroness who suffers. It is the Rovanian people. So get off your high horse and stop saying that this is for the Rovanian people. This is for what? You tell for... that to the 9,000 Rovanians in Durendal who will stand strong with her should it come to arms. You tell that to her court who has flocked around here and supported her through this endeavor. You do not understand because you are Aradan. You are not Rovanian like we are. You do not understand what it means to live beneath the yoke of a king. You do not understand that because you are not from our society. I mean no offense. None taken. But it is the truth. We revolt every five years and it's crushed miserably. If, if this were a duel, that would have been called a parry. A, a deflection of sorts. I don't care about your parries, your duels. I don't care about your rebellions. I don't care about any of it. I really do not. But you're here nonetheless. I put an X to that paper. I am a king's man. I will always be a king's man. I will follow my orders, and that's it. But I agree. You need to start laying out exactly what it is, because every time we cut a new layer of this onion, one of us is crying. And it's usually on our side, because it's usually more shit being put on us. 
I do not wear a sword at my waist, I use my words. You wear swords at your waist and you wreak havoc. <laughs> that is where you're wrong. I have almost twice died on this journey, and I don't carry a sword. But it's misfortunate. Except when needed. Then it's misfortunate, then, that you are the unlucky one, because every one of your friends here carries swords. So hear me out. I have no sword. Hear me out. We are not enemies, but let us speak plainly. Now is the time to talk about these things. The time before in the mountains, the time before in Hastings, the time before in Durinville was not. Okay, but the time is now, because we are nearing Kale Tyrion, whether you like it or not, we're going there. So that we must, we must, we must find the path together. Right, lay out your plan as you see it. Because... I don't have a plan. You are Dufresne, that's my point. Let me, let me help fill in the blank so you may understand. It is not my job to formulate the plan. My only role in this is to ensure that Baron Clayton R.K. holds to his promises to the Baroness. And then we need to save the Baron, make sure the Madeline gets there, and still somehow get you home alive. Those are, those are the task at hand. Please, if you could enumerate at this point, because I've lost track. Then I shall, I shall try again. We know we are going to kill Tyrion. Yes. The Madeline is being brought there as a gift. Wolfgang Copper has promised his loyalty to the Baroness. It is a plain fact. Unnecessary. And Wolfgang is... We've already been down this road. Brother of the man's wife. Clayton, okay. So, right. Again, unnecessary. he is somewhat of a man of import, so we mm. probably should make sure that he doesn't die before we arrive. Again, unnecessary. I would think that perhaps she might be a bit happy that we saved her brother's life. Her emotional attachment does not fit into necessarily our plans. Exactly. Unless that is something new that has been added that I am not aware of. If Master Kappa is to pass away, so, she will be despondent and uncontrollable. Well, let me ask you, Lisa. Um, if, if I were to tell you that I knew a murder, I knew it was going to happen, yes. would you try to act in order to keep that person alive? If I were saying, say, Terwin was going to die on Tuesday night, you, you're just going to sit there and do nothing? What kind of people would we be if we just sat around and didn't help? So I don't care whether it's part of the contract. The right thing to do is try to make sure that people don't get killed. I know nothing of the man that's supposed to supposedly die. Well, but to put my life on the line for someone, I need to know the reason. There's it's Madeline there's, there, right? Madeline there. Save R.K. Return the barrister. Are those our tasks? Is there anything else? That is. That is. If you were to plot, enumerate it, yes, plainly. But also, save Wolfgang from whatever has taken him at this point. It is a complication no one could have foreseen. For all we know, it could have been one of you carrying the reek with you to the ship, and it has infected him. We do not know. Let's not point fingers. This is just perils of a journey. And Things happen. And, and, and but the, another concern. The reek doesn't turn your skin gray. We've seen the reek firsthand. All right. All right. So we've we've had enough. We've had enough discourse at this point. Gonna see Sir Wolfgang. We're going to see about protecting Clayton. Because regardless of whether or not it was a part of the contract, this life is important, and if there's something we can do, we're gonna do something about it. Well, we'll hopefully have more information when we arrive at Dupre Pavilion upon this matter. This is simply letters that I received hastings short as they were. 280 characters, she says. So, <laughs> so, if there's anything else that anyone at this table would like to add, since we're adding things, you should speak up now. For me, you brought up money. It's not about money. We're already getting paid. The only thing that I want is for you to take a moment and recognize that even though we do wear swords at our waist, it is because of those swords that you, you are still here. Certainly, I have no doubt about that, and I never doubted that. Right, so please, do not talk down to us for when. That's what I want. There's a necessary instrument for the things that you must do. 
just as the pen is for me and others. Thank you for the validation. Anything else that you that you lot want? I would love my name stricken from any of these rebellions. That perhaps you should change your name before we arrive at Kel Tyrion, and the same goes for a lot of you. Well, you don't know my last name. I've never told you. You're not listening. You're you're bickering. Stop. Listen to me. If you wish to stay safe in all of this, you are Dufresne. You are spies, but for God's damn sake, do what spies do. I shouldn't have to tell you this. Well, I've never had to change my name before. You've never had to change your name or flee from the West. <clears throat> I mean no offense, but I've heard this story from you. Flee from the West? Um, my city was destroyed. I am speaking of the loyalties you have in Durandal to others who are not necessarily on the right side of the law. Ah, I've never said those words to you, but I guess I have. This has been a long road, she smiles. Sure. Jonathan, may I speak with you? Uh, are we done? He looks kind of around and shrugs. Sure. I... Seem to have time. It's clear that you are prickly and angry. And frankly, I am frustrated. Perhaps we can try again tomorrow. We'll be better once we sleep. Oh, I thought we had our marching orders, so. Well, we're, we're, we're bailing water again tomorrow, yeah. Excuse Ruin. me. She leaves. Sammy is not there either. It's just the six of you. Ruining my sore muscles, like. Ooh. Oh, that was something. My word. Yes. Oh. Moon stars and queen of... Pain in the eyes. Yes. Uh, keeps asking and asking and asking. It is the uh, endless cauldron of uh, favors. But let's not talk about that. Where is your... May, may I ask just something simple? You can... Tell me to flip off or jump in the river. I most certainly would not do either such thing. Well, then. I already cannot carry the buckets that are assigned to me. <laughs> it's all right. All of us are not built the same way. What, uh... We would not be here without you. What can place. I do for you? Ah. Uh, what is this, um... What is this profit in you? It seems that... Not to say this, and because that's, I think I'm better than these people that follow, you know, things that fall from the sky. And, but I think I am better than those people, so why would you do such a thing? Why would you give up your life for this? That we can turn a wooden stole into flames? I mean, it seems like petty pettiness to me, but... Oh. Based on uh, the barrister's words, I would say a great number of many people uh, do end up following uh, words that fall from the sky somewhere or another, for by my account of it, the, all of the political power lies with the birds themselves. It seems like an awful lot of people are doing what an awful lot of flying things are telling them to do. Same on this side of the, on this side of the ship's bow, if you will. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I don't mean I don't mean to be flippant. I don't mean to be glib. No, it's not like that. I, the palace intrigue is. It's uh, it, it, I am disinterested. I'm very disinterested in that. But why would you follow this prophet? If you do not seem the type to fall into mysticism. Well, there was a uh, there, was a, uh, there was a there was a terrible night in which uh, light persisted throughout the the moon and on that very night I did not fall so much into mysticism as mysticism damn near fell into me and for the prophet it most certainly did fall into if you catch my meaning I catch it I'm saying it literally fell into him just caught him on fire and the twice burned, or the once burned, or whatever other yeah. silly names uh, they're calling him. Warmed up his soup. Uh, 
Suit. Suit. You're going to hear an awful lot of silly names at a masquerade ball where many a uh, king and queen and jester and court will uh, hold a, uh, a paper mache mask in front of their face and pretend to be a, a jape. Which will be amazingly uh, hard to find uh, an assassin among them. Well, if I were them, I would just put it in his food. That would be the easiest, wouldn't it? I'm not yeah. saying that I am him. <clears throat> well, didn't... No, please. Didn't she say that they wouldn't be doing it with knives? Well, I mean... Right. Well, if everyone's getting in them, I don't know if they're going to pat people down or just go on honor. Unless they, they could potentially be a knife with which to cut his meat. Is it, <clears throat> that is also a knife. Maybe it'll be all those uh, finger food types. Wait, so... I I'm, think we may have lost the meeting. We, yeah, now, I'm getting confused. She said they wouldn't... Right? Not they would. Correct. They would not be allowed. Yeah, yeah, she so said she suspected that they would not use knives. Yeah, since so knives will not be allowed. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. By knife, she does not mean just knife. She means weapons. <laughs> yeah, we all, yeah. we all yeah. know <laughs> the proverbial knife. <laughs> to answer your question, I believe, and uh, before we move on to other matters, I believe that I have seen the future of what this land and all lands hold. I'll look to the mad line with the uh, Aw and affection. I see, I see. It just doesn't seem to be something that one of our yoke would, would take upon themselves. But well, And then a, my next question. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he just seems to be a man of scientific disposition to me. He reveres this sort of thing as, as I would revere Leviathan's eye in the sky. What difference does it make? It's, it's one or the other. It's worship of the same. I see what you're saying. Well, where is your prophet? Where is he ran to? I wish that I could answer that question honestly, and I do not mean to obfuscate or to... Uh, no, no. But I honestly do not know. <coughs> ah, just... The no, truth is, is that... More courtesy than anything to have hear your side. The truth is, is that uh, cities are... Places in which men hide. Yes. You had them. You hide among other men. And to hide out here is to uh, welcome death. I think that we've all uh, seen more than our fair share of that. Mm-hmm. I think what Banneker was getting at was the prophet and his lot head off one direction, and you went the other with the Madeline. What gives? If you're truly following the prophet. It would make sense to follow the prophet, not, not the. I got the right of it, huh? Yeah, yeah, not the item that created. Most of them lack imagination. They do not understand the chain of command, I suppose, as well as I do. Oh, like Eustace. Consider the what is the source and what is the correlation. It's like you what said. is the cause and what is the caused. The prophet does not exist without the Madeline. The Madeline is the source. It's like you said the other day. Whatever it was that made the prophet is what makes the Madeline tick. Yes. And the Madeline made the prophet not the other way around. Well, which does not make the prophet not a uh, an agent of Marvel. Whatever comes next. <laughs> but. So the red book, though. Mm-hmm. I'll glance over at her. Yeah. What about it? Describe how to stop this thing. Do we hold that? And I'll do the. <laughs> <laughs> if she's listening to our stories, she's listening to everything. Obviously. Do we hold that book? The book is yours. It is. The book is not part of this deal. It is. I would the know. diagrams that we have, those other books that we have with the diagrams, those are ours. Yes. I would not allow those out of my person, but... Would it be yeah. safe to assume that considering all of the work was looked at by Hexenstern, that there might be someone in the Baroness's keep that knows, yes. Oh. Knows exactly how to reconstruct this thing, and that's mm-hmm. why they sent it? Possibly not that, but they, they at least know the notes that I have. It's a very good possibility. 
But as far as reconstructing this, uh, we're to give it up in two days. There's no way that this could be working again in two days. But if it's the paradigm shift he's talking about, where, I mean, let's face it, <coughs> when gunpowder came onto the battlefield, <coughs> it was so poorly used that they thought it was worthless. You know, it took, yeah. took one general to set up volley fire and men men to fall in scores in one battle to change the world. If this changes the world in that same way, that is huge. Well, it, it will if this, as it is theorized, could actually raise into the sky and well, that's my be a conveyance. But, but, How do we stop it then? You want me to sabotage the cauldron? But wouldn't that make sense? Have the have this power in somebody else's hand to wield. It's not. I don't know. Well, you know how I feel. Yeah, my political tendencies. His brow. My political tendencies are not of the same will as this. We already done established that they don't have the wand for it, so it's not going to go anywhere, right? You can make a key but again. You can make the key again. You have a Sammy who's tittered with this, and well, to be I don't fair, know. I mean, to all we me. know about this thing is that it, it, it doesn't work, right? Like, even when it was literally yeah, ship-shaped, yeah. it crashed and burned, right? Well, when you have a crazy person at running... Right, a crazy a smart cr- person, right? This guy... Crazy smart can build. ...thing circles around all of us. Every yeah. invention but, starts with but, a failure. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we ever would have thought that there'd be carriages without, without horses running around. But there is one. If you believe that didn't explode or run into a wall at some point within its, you know, infancy, then obviously you're incorrect. Things break before they're fixed, before they're thought out. Just two weeks ago, I was outside of my home, and bear in mind that my home is a lot more modest than it used to be. And I saw a... uh, a wagoneer raging in the street at a axle that had broken on his cart. <clears throat> he was furious. He was very angry, and he obviously took like great affront with the man who had originally sold him the the cart some time back and had done his smithing work for him. Right, and to him he screamed, and his face turned beet red, and his veins throbbed, and he said, "But this was working only yesterday." This is a th- this is something that is true of everything that breaks. Is that at one point it does, and the next moment it does not. As yeah. Lisa said, it goes the other way. I agree, but do we truly believe something that you are calling a paradigm shift should go in the hands of anyone? <coughs> part anyone. of the a big part of the reason that I accompany her and that I uh, stowed away on your uh, rather. Uh, Fabulous uh, fall trip to the west <coughs> was that I wanted to see what sort of person and imagination this Baron is. So he's a pacifist, if we can believe anything that we've been told, in which I don't believe we can. And we'll find out for ourselves. There's no reason, <coughs> there's no reason to sabotage the Madeline, as the Madeline is already effectively sabotaged. As you said, yes, it lacks mechanical components that uh, are compromising its functionality, no question about that. But it is also lacking something else. In the same way that <laughs> gunpowder fails to work without a, uh, a spark or a sulfurous fuse. And that is? Well, I, when I speak of it, it uh, tends to rankle a bit, but... You've seen what the prophet can do. <coughs> Magic. It's a it's a base way of putting it, certainly, but for lack of a better term, sure. Yeah, you yeah. believe the prophet's the only pilot of this? I don't, and that is what concerns me. But me too. I do believe that the uh, the Baron's court may lack that. Yeah. I would hope. My hope is that this is just a symbol of. Status, but 
I, I suppose we might as well leave everything out on the table since I'm involved in your uh, your skull and uh, and dagger business. I believe I'm now a a member of your uh, your spy troop by uh, <coughs> someone's words. Yes. Uh, whether you wanted me to be or not, I suppose that's uh, the the cat proverbially is already out of the proverbial bag, right? We are all espionage. Does appear the infection spreads, yes. Well, well spies here, oh. as you can tell. You can you tell the bosses the the most spy like person you've ever met? Could you could you tell that he is not a soldier? Yes. No, we are not. No, it's all we're not spies. Yeah. The thing is, there there might be one spy in our group, but we are not spies. Yeah. That was a her, funny her, assumption, her assumption. <laughs> <laughs> funny, Jonathan. Funny, I'm glad. But, but again, her assumptions of our abilities are, are so far-fetched <laughs> that I, they're laughable. I don't know if I would say that they are laughable. I think that at least in some cases, the uh, the court is quite a quite a Twitter about uh, some of the things that uh, that go on. Bear in mind that. Uh, you have uh, you have cast uh, great waves in a place that is not uh, sea bound. That's very difficult to do. Yes, we tend to do that. Yes. Well, I yeah. Think. I mean, even if we try to, or not. But protection duty has never really been all. <clears throat> it's obvious that protection duty was not entirely what they intended for you. Yeah, you well, are. <clears throat> It's obvious that I mean, they are protecting to... everyone every all the live long day down the road and down the river. But yeah. the question is what their intent is with this. I believe that this is a Have you seen the uh the great uh, gray man like beast that uh, inhabits the jungles of the far, far west? They walk around and use their hands to balance themselves there like men, but not, and they don't fight as often as they need to, because what they do instead is show their tremendous weight and strength by puffing their chests and pounding at them. They must weigh 40 stone, and all they have to do is show that they weigh 40 stone. Well, the Madeline is a lot more than 40 stone, if you get my drift. I do. I do. It shows what they what Durendal is capable of in a subtle way without being threatening. Right? It shows, oh, look at this tremendous gift that we have to give. And the implication is that this is something that can be rebuilt. It's a gift of science. It's a gift of technology. And it's a show that you already possess that. Right. And that you can replicate it. If it were me, we're not to be, that your Baroness is not to be trifled with. If it were me, what I would use a flying ship for is what a ship's are already used for, trade. Just think about it. You don't got to worry about waterways or oceans. Or bandits. Just, or bandits. You just fly from the farthest reaches and around, bringing all kinds of exotic goods. You can make a fortune. More money you can make on war. What about storms? I mean, storms come and go, but you're up that high. You can see them coming for miles. You ever seen a bird in a storm? Yeah, they land. So you can land... Doesn't rain all the time. Right. It doesn't rain all the time. Again, it's this is only the only in Ravania does it rain <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, is that this is the imagination of which I speak. When I spoke of walls being broken <coughs> down, those walls are not just those that are sieged by catapults and ballista. That's a good point. I'm just saying there, there's a lot of money in trade. Yeah, and not. I think it'd be a bit harder to do, but I still think this thing could be taken down with a. Uh, with the lowest stuff. Well, sure, you throw enough stones at anything, it's going to break. Yep. All these ideas are just flights of fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, good uh, Did you myself. intend the, uh, <laughs> you, know, you, uh, you are, uh, more clever than your, uh, your eyes have the ability to color. <laughs> but nonetheless. He is a witty fellow, and he likes to rub it in people's faces when he wins one. <laughs> it's discouraging that someone would see something so beautiful and so tremendous and so awe-inspiring and think what size of rock they could use to bring it down. As but, a soldier, what would you expect? I'm just doing my job. Well, please do not sink it with a rock whenever my, uh, my back is turned. 
I, I am sorry. I am. I am very. I am very glib, and I am flippant. As I said, I do not mean to uh, offend. Well, let's get to our next point. It sounds, Jonathan, it's it's very good to meet you again. No ill will towards you from what we said before. No. We didn't kill you. You're still here. Thanks for saving us. I think that's enough about that. What do we do, your boss? And I'm, I'm I'm sorry to say it, but at least you and the boss are. I don't know anything about protecting people. I know about cutting their purses and killing them on a road when I need what they have. Well, let's be honest. <clears throat> we would lay out our hands. Honestly, I'm the only spy here, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Cloak I mean, and knives on the table. <laughs> Cloak and dagger. Elisa, here she comes. Yes, no, funny enough. I ain't much of a liar, but I guess I can learn. Uh, well, there, there, we bit, know you can't lie. <laughs> there's a bit more than lying, and also, typically, you can't promise things <clears throat> of other people <laughs> if you're trying to sneak. So. But, but what do we do here? This man is... Obviously, if he's truly, if there's an assassination attempt going to happen, he's not going to let his own guards carry weapons. That would be... I, mean, well, I can get weapons in. That's not a problem. He's well, from the... There, there we go. I mean, that would be something that I wouldn't have thought of, but I guess there's people that have the capabilities to do so. If that's what we choose to do, but let's be honest here, I, I don't know that... Probably a bad idea. Well, I don't know that it's a bad idea, but... I, you can't stab a poison vial. I mean, you can, but it's not going to do anything. So what do we do? We insist that one well, of us taste his food? And, uh, sorry. I would imagine the man ha- must have a man that does that for him. Not necessarily a baron. He might not be high enough to have a taste. But I mean, if I knew someone were going to try to kill me, I'd hire one. Or If you don't believe the threat, why would you bother? I mean, all right. So the goal then is to eat everything they're going to eat before they eat it. Got it. No, just no, about poor and Art Rovanians kind <laughs> of like <laughs> tough guys that uh, <coughs> would refuse to allow someone to like demonstrate weakness. And <coughs> do they have food tasters? The, the Rovanians are a very pragmatic and proud people. But RK is not Rovanian. He is. The Arcades, the Dupre, the Genevieve. Yeah, you're dealing strictly with Provanian. This okay. is, Ro- is okay. Rovanian politics. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah remember, Clayton Arcade, just real quickly about board. Clayton Arcade is the brother to Stanton Arcade, the Red, Red Knight, Knight, the butcher of Bender's Ridge. Right. But like, he was like a bad dude who uh, was killed by Brandis Adelard, as a matter of fact. Uh, you yeah, know, total side. Yeah, he was a bad dad. So, yeah. Here is my thought. We need to get Wolfgang apparently back into, the, if not fighting shape, at least um, upright shape, correct? Because otherwise his sister will not be compliant, <coughs> and then we will have issues with the Baron, etc., etc. So we need to get him going. When we get him working, then we need to work our way in to speak to the Baron, because I think huh. trying to protect him from the outside and not having his ear, not having his, his back, as it were, would be a lot harder. Yeah. To assume it's poison is, is... I expect we can figure out some of the particulars once we get near the, near the place of the party and such. Just, who knows what it'll look like? I mean, why we can plan the live long day and, you know, maybe turn out the other way around to something else. I'm just saying, don't don't get put the, car, the horse ahead of the cart. Here's how you get a man to... Don't you the horse in front of the car? Well... The other way around. You cut before yeah. the horse. Here's how you get a man above your station to um, to allow you to protect him. You make him believe that you are the only answer. And I'm not meaning in a way of saying like, oh well, like breaking everyone else's kneecaps. So you know, like a racketeering sort of thing. But you get in on his good side. Oh, this is a good point, boss. Do you double down on the threat? Said the Dufresne are here because we've heard the same threat. Well, yeah. I mean, we need to we need to have some some dialogue with him, and you know, well, someone of a low born 
somewhat of a, a low-born station as myself wouldn't be as good at it as perhaps someone of a higher station. It sounds very much like you're arguing that we uh, just tell the truth if for no other reason than it's the easiest thing to remember. That's it. And it's the right thing to do in this case. It's always the right thing to do. No. Uh... Sometimes <laughs> it's not. We did save some children from, from being slaves by lying. Mm -hmm. That seemed to work out pretty well for us. Yeah. But in this case, it's the right thing to do. It's just one. Just because, one example. Because if we're trying to protect him, and we lie to him, and he finds out, then there's no way he would ever trust us. And... We would be working against him to give him a reason to not trust us. And that would be working against the Baroness's interests, and we're never going to getting out of this goddamn city until she wins her, yeah. her city uh, state. Well, as, as many problems as I have with with the uh, barrister, the one problem I don't have is saving a man's life. Well, why don't we just get to the city, beat feet around, figure out what's going on, and then work from there? I'm just saying, we're speculating over speculating. You're right. You're right. No, he's right. How do we? How, we we do. If you want to beat feet, how, how do we find this assassin? How do we? Hey, I, you know I'm not an expert in gossip and such, but you know that's kind of your sort. But you do it. You All right. Figure it out. Yeah. Sitting so, around a campfire this time of night, just flapping our jaws is what we're doing. That's it. I got work to do. Well, yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. Maybe we do break. Right so there's one last one last thing that's kind of rubbing the, me the wrong way not as if I'm angry or nothing but just odd and we don't need to even be hemming and on about it all night but I just, just want people to think about it did it seem like the barrister was acting like a different person like the barrister so far in this journey has been my favorite person Always nice, always like cordial, and you know, knew me father. But then tonight was acting quite the opposite. Well, I reckon she's getting all fired up for what's to come. This is when she's hitting center stage and putting on her game face and getting ready to do all the politicking that she does. Yeah, and again, you know, no one knows the. The workings of a person who's got that much pressure and all that, but it's just odd. That's all. Well, be wary. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. Cast detect evil. <laughs> 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 let's, be, let's be honest here. Nobody's been completely forthright with us, and maybe that is her as a forthright person. You know, the most forthright person was actually. Uh, Harem? No. This that, point? The, the, the Alornite who was, uh... I mean, the you problem can't there. trust no Alornite? No, you can't. You can't, and you should never... Right. But he was the most forthright. He, he straight up said, I'll read your letter. Well, okay, sure. I guess that's a man that says, hey, I'm a liar to your face. Well, at least he's telling you the truth that he's a liar. Yeah, and now we can trust that we can't trust him. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to assume not to trust in the Alloranite as far as I can throw them. It just goes without saying, is what I know. <laughs> Some of the Alloranites are uh, quite slender, and I'm reckoning looking at the. Uh, I'm frail. The... You mean X instead? You've, got, you've, been to, you've been to war. I bet you could throw them at least a couple of them relatively far. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would not say that I feel like I could. Uh, Catapult notwithstanding, just put them in the bucket. <laughs> you know, Jonathan, if you wanted to prove your worth a little bit earlier, you should have been telling these jokes sooner. <laughs> well, as uh, we've heard tonight, there are apparently times in which conversations are uh, told and other times not. <laughs> if you'll excuse him, apparently there's only a certain time at which we are allowed to have information put in front of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you have some width for sure. By the way, I've been meaning to tell you, Lord. <laughs> We've got fourteen more tasks. <laughs> to be fair, I did. I did worry that uh, you would uh, run me through and be done with it, and I did not feel that that was a uh, particularly uh, be fitting into my uh, pilgrimage. That was before. Uh. 
We're giving you information now. See, this is how this particular group works. <laughs> just so you know, right now you're safe. Oh. This may change. Oh, yeah. Hey. Community initiatives and all. We're going to find out exactly what we have to do in the next 24 hours, I assume. We are, uh, I figure we're just going to roll with it. We're <laughs> just like I said. <laughs> roll with it. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> so much I think that yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. Very punny. So good night, sleep well, and may kill you in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, I hope that there are not too many more uh, Surprises? Days, of, days of work, honestly. I'm not really uh, one more, I'm not sir. really built for it. One more, Jonathan. We'll put you uh, when we put you uh, against the put you against the rail this time. Hard work today's hard work now. I'll move, I'll, I'll move to I'll move to the stairs. Well, I, I I could use a break once in a while. I don't uh, I don't get seasick, but as long as I can, uh, I, I appreciate that. I do. I delicate hands. I see. I recognize. I there are hands that are good at various things. I'm well, sorry that I cannot. Uh, just think of it this way: some work is harder than others, but this pales in comparison to others. Uh, gosh, all right, I'm going to bed. Bob. All right, we're going to bed now. It's all right, <laughs> it is time for sleep. I can take no more of you. I'd like to hear. In the, I'd like to hear in the morning how you how uh, Wolf gone fast. Right. Let's know how that turns out. I hope you'll be very cautious. Please I'll take measures. Your life is worth more than his. Especially considering the last time that we saw this was the professor. Everyone's life is at stake here. Weighing like that on board. Wait. It's not just me. It's not just you. It's not just know. him. The last time we he saw this. He needs to be seen to. The last time we saw this was. The professor. That is correct. Who created this cauldron. You know, I have studied uh, some anatomy as well. As Wait. was required of my schooling. I have no. Has he been playing with the cauldron too? What? Sammy has as well. Did you hear her? That's interesting. Weren't you all? Didn't Wait, you all the professor had grayscale. Yes, before he jumped. Do you remember his hand? No. His oh, yeah. hand was completely covered in gray. It was a uh, bandage stop. Yes, wasn't it? but the the bandages fell before he jumped when he was trying to stop us from looking through the notes at first. I don't remember that. I do. Let's let's not jump to any conclusions before I take a look at him. He's well, got him cordoned off, cordoned off. That's good enough. But just everyone, keep your distance. Be careful. So the oh. night will continue on, and you will wake in the next day and continue your labors. We're gonna go over the. Uh, <clears throat> yes, game. let's let's roll some skills. It's gonna okay. be a secret heal test. Okay, I'm and gonna. I the, Jonathan's going to assist too, right? I actually have a. Um, Plague Doctor Mask I will, I'll be using. You will don to make sure I'm not exposing myself. Oh, well, that doesn't prevent you from being exposed. Well, that prevents, I, that prevents miasma. Yes, the miasma is what I'm worried about. Oh, well, the miasma may not be what made him <laughs> sick. The Rico's a miasma. Is well, this a miasma? We'll find out. <laughs> we're in nonetheless, because uh, he's, he's, he's probably in a coordinate off area. It's in sure. and such. So. Elisa can, also has that a chance to do tonight. Okay, okay. We'll, get, we'll get to that. Yeah, I'm just going to have, them, I'm gonna have like, to roll yeah. some dice here. Okay. So, it's going to be a secret toughness test. Toughness test. Sorry, okay. secret heal test, my apologies. Secret heal test. With assist. With assist. All right. So, my two heal, the line. My heal check, uh, my <clears throat> heal score is 64. Mm-hmm. And I rolled a critical success. It's 11. Well, you rolled a critical something. Pretty sure it's a success. I, yeah, I was say, <laughs> are you, you sure? You want to re-roll that? There is no yeah, doubt in your five, mind five that he is oh, in wow. fact sick, but it is not with grayscale. <laughs> he is certainly green around the gills, and maybe it's just the poor lighting that Sammy was looking at. But Wolfgang looks like he's contracted venereal disease. <laughs> Clapping him out for that? It's, it's, it's a slow clap. clap. Does anybody notice how calm the trip went after the captain went down there? Did I do that? <laughs> and and unless you have an ampule of quicksilver and a bandage, you can't even begin to treat this. Right, let's see what I got. 
Quicksilver. He uh he 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 says he says specifically this whole business of the hot piss, he says. Hot piss. It's been giving me the pain since Durendal. Well typically in a situation like this as he as Warren takes off his plate doctor's mask. Typically in a situation like this. The pain. Yeah, thanks. For you. For you were born with the burning piss. The doctor would uh, <laughs> would let you know what's going on in a delicate manner, but let's face it, you 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 kind of knew what was going on. You you don't want anyone else to know. It. I take that. I take it that's the case, right? I can treat your condition. We gotta wait till we get to the city, though. I intended to seek out a physician. He says very plainly. Very well then. Well. Hey, he is very guarded about anything, as you kind of confirm what he already knew. Well, yeah. knowing the severity of which this is treated, specifically iron catheter through the genitalia and mites, all mites drop inside the, the catheter, and then followed by a shot of quicksilver and a bandage to keep the leakage uh, at bay, as a way that hot piss is treated. Fun. I, I I can treat you if if you want to keep it a secret. But uh, to be fair, you work with animals. He says. I think I trust somebody who knows a bit more about the body than you. Wouldn't fair enough. Move on, man. <laughs> That's your call. I gotta tell a man how to treat his own body. But, uh, I, I wish you good luck with it. Uh, no, it's... So, the next day comes, and you begin your work. And it is a long... Sorry, my apologies. Elisa, that evening, mm-hmm. you wish to attend to something? She's interested in the cauldron. <coughs> You're down there with Sammy. And, uh, she might, uh, before she goes down there with Sammy, she might partake of a little bit of mandrake root. Sure. So that she can, uh... What brings you down here? He says, kind of a... Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, mandrake root obviously is, uh, one corruption. Mm-hmm. And you know the benefits. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Brings you down here. Just really want to look at this. Well, I showed you the inner workings. Come here, I'll, I'll show you where the, I think the ivory wand goes. Yeah, let's Give me your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You plummet it into this, like, liquid. And you can feel it kind of viscous over your arms. And as you pull out, it smells strange. It smells really strange. You can feel kind of the divots in the bottom of the cauldron, the bottom of the engine, where he reckons that where all the gearing, as he explains, however the, however the clockwork works where it turns things in a... I even not it looks kind of like this as he's got chalk drawings on the inside of the hole of the thing. I think that's if we get something shimmered inside there, that's what's gonna turn it. But you need something that's uh, gonna be strong enough and not and not break. Yeah. Ivory's what I reckon. I don't know any other any other materials we could use though. Has yeah. to be smooth. Right. 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 Mm. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's Yeah, I like that. Um I want to, I'd like to see though, have you seen how the mechanism is turned? Like, who would put that in? Have you seen? Have you been able to, to hand crank it maybe? Or... Hells no. No? I wouldn't be willing to do it in the first place. This thing's uh, a powder keg wouldn't explode, he says. I'd love to actually be able to see it though. If we took the fuel out, it wouldn't matter. We could just see the mechanism on move. It's going to be an arduous scrutinized test. I hear strange mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, for anybody watching, this is true detective. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> when intoxicated. Tyler, I flat can... circle. <laughs> the yellow cane. The yellow cane. The yellow cane. I have a 62 <laughs> in scrutinize, so arduous, that's a 32. Okay. 34 won't do it. Oh, oh, oh. you want to re roll? Kind of. 
we get some misfortune coming my way. You know way. what? Nobody else has done it. I mean, it's right. the worst I I'll take happen, it. Right? Let's, let's get it. I, only have a, point. I only have a third of a chance. Oh. Maybe you can learn something. Uh, 27 will do it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yay! Hey, woo! Being high. Oh. oh. Jerk's good. I'm good. Well... Uh, the thing that you learn is that he is without a doubt correct about the ivory key. In fact, if you could find some sort of material that would be smooth and tensile enough to withstand whatever kind of inner workings, you could turn this thing over with what fuel it has inside of it now, what bottom lightning is actually in the bottom of it. Now, what the outcome would be, you're not really sure. You know that it will start... But you don't know what will happen after that. You know that many pieces of this this entire the battle line are missing, probably lost in the crash. The can I tell the, at this point that it could not be functional? <laughs> it is one hundred percent functional. The Arkwright culture does. The the battle line is not. In fact, down here there's no char marks where it had exploded. It's mostly top deck, uh, where those pipes kind of terminated up toward where the mast was. And that large canopy was born. That parasol, as uh, Sammy called it. So the exhaust mechanism is where the failure happened. I'm, I'm speaking way out of Sure. Way Did you make, you make that assumption? I, huh. She will not say a damn word to Sammy. Not a damn word. She will, however, not a damn you. word. Right. She will, however, quit <coughs> repeatedly while trying to run her hands over all of the mechanisms and looking through the call. Yeah. This will solve the first of three mysteries of the red book for you, by the way. Awesome. Does that have to do with the ivory wand? Is that one of the mysteries, or is yep. it something different? Okay. You know that the three mysteries contained within this is mechanism, control, and flight. You have solved the mechanism. The next day is laborious, but sometime toward midday, you make much better. Um, <coughs> you make much better uh, time than you first expected. Um, as you're ready to come toward the the docks of Kaelterian. and the first thing that you kind of see as you're as you're approaching um, the city is there's these very steep cliff sides on either side of the river. The river becomes much more narrow in places. It looks a little like the bluffs of the Ozarks. Uh, and then stretching across these bluffs is this broad arched bridge, good like 80 feet above you, wrought from stone. Perhaps the stone here, this maybe this was what this whole mountain was formed together, but it has separated and that plinth of rock between it is where you can see a bustling city far above. Down toward the bottom of the bluffs where you see these kind of like all these different kind of winches and heavy wooden and rope rigging and things like that is this other settlement down below this wharf as you come up on a, a small town along the edge of um, along the edge of uh, the axe water you have, you've reached Kale Tyrion successfully to the wood points um, <clears throat> and that is where you're at and for some reason, I can't find what I wanted to find. Aha, the bustling port. You didn't? Yeah. If you talk to the dock master, you can quick travel here. That's right. Mm. It's a flight point. No, I said there's a flight path. Yeah. <laughs> you can <laughs> see that <laughs> you are certainly not the only ship moored up here either. There's quite a bit of ambiance of folk kind of gathered here and there. Um, all along the side of the river, and you stand within the shadows of these tall, looming bluffs of Kale Tyrion. You know that there's a city both above and below. The city below is constructed of houses set up on stilts over the water, including those affixed into the sides of the bluffs where they flatten out in places where you can see low stone houses kind of looking over the river. There's kind of a lot of smoke around here, a lot of hubbubbery. There's fisher folk, there are stevedores, 
There are all manner of people. There are local Ravanian uh, fishermen, and fisherwomen, uh, boat, boat, bosuns, uh, kind of <coughs> trafficking up and down the river upon low bodied uh, canoes or otherwise. But the whole place is fairly busy, including the shores, where you begin to, um, where you can see a number of wooden jetties coming out. And as the, as the oxen kind of draw along the shore, the ship is kind of grabbed by these mooring ropes by about a good, like, ten stevedores, and they're kind of guiding it into between these wharfs, where you can see other river ships as well. There's this kind of look of awe and wonder as they behold this massive galley that is clearly not born for the river. But so shallow about bellied it was, you're surprised it actually didn't just like get stuck on a sandbar. Uh, but it is a broad-bellied ship that would be built for the sea, so there's kind of a look of amazement as there's some questions coming from the wharf master as he's speaking with Sammy and Harung Bigley as they're kind of getting ready to pay tolls and such. Uh, the barrister of Rosalia disembarks from the gangplank along with you, and you could feel the ground once again beneath your boots as you're up on this clapboard road that kind of winds its way through this low woods below the bluff where, this, where the lower city of Kaelterian rests. What part of the day is it at this point? You, you'd wager it's probably the latter part of midday, but it's hard to see the sun because you only have a sliver of the sky mm. to see between the, uh, between the, um, between the high bluffs. Welcome to Kaelterian, the man says as he comes out. Howdy. New to the city, are ya? He's got this wooden book, or right. a wooden book along with him and such. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ruvanian, the lot here? Hi. Oh, I am. Yeah. <clears throat> I come from a town called Crawlstead. Anyone not say they're Romanian? Well, I'm not going to say I'm Romanian. It's oh. obvious I'm not Romanian. I'm not Romanian. <laughs> Just look at me. All right, then. You all can get in. It's going to be a bit per boot. All right. <coughs> Pay the man two bits. For right. the Rova- Romanians, get in free. Oh, oh, well, thank you. <clears throat> you other folk need to pay a bit per boot. The extra pair of shoes, I'm not going to charge you for it, he says. He smiles. You can tell this fellow is clearly wearing this kind of heavy tartan over his clothes. He's clearly from the mountains. He's, a fo- he's one of the folk. You can hear music upon the air, perhaps coming somewhere up above in the upper city, about 80, 80 feet up, as you look toward that plinth of rock that kind of like stretches, almost meeting from one side of the bluff to the other. And it's very, very broad. It's almost like... Wa- going beneath of a, 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 a natural bridge of stone, but it's very, very broad. Almost like you're entering a cave of a sort uh, beneath the upper city. You've heard many tales of Kael Tyrion being unassailable by the river, and the stories certainly do ring true. You would have to approach it uh, along the road, but for the forests are so thick here, there'd be no way to move siege engines or even troops through it. It's no wonder that the bastard king, who was executed here in Kael Tyrion, as a matter of fact, it's no wonder that he called himself his, the seat of his kingdom. And in fact, it is a, uh, as the Norvanians have before him, it is, he has met his end here. The Kaelterian still stands. And to some, many believe <coughs> Kaelterian is the capital of R- the Ravain Girdle, or at least it was dubbed that as such. The only person who came was close enough to allow it to secede from the from the Aglador from the west was the bastard king. Others say it is Durendal because Durendal had the favor of Duke Vance Dauntenthorn, who once ruled Durendal, the, 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 this where Dauntenthorn steel came from, in fact. But the Dauntenthorns have long abandoned the Rovain girdle about uh, nine years back after um, after King Cassandra the Unifier called the people back to the west after the death of Vance Dauntenthorn and the, the war broke out. So that is going to be left back in Romanian hands. So, uh, the barrister says, perhaps we should retire to the Dupre Pavilion above. We can uh, find some rest, take, uh, see to our sore feet, and All right. we can offer you uh, at least do something. 
It's an apology. We can speak in private. Yeah. Once we settle in. Might be nice to sleep in a bed. Take a bath. You can install our trappings above. If you have any business to do though here near the wharfs, please take the hour. Just something, but other than that, I'm quite well. I'll wait with the barrister, Sammy says. As will I, Ron declares. <coughs> I don't quite need anything. I think I'm alright. Use a rest. I'm just gonna buy a light crossbow and a bunch of bolts. Mm. If it po- oh, possible. The lady, the man says, a local tradesman. You know, crossbows are illegal in Idle Lenore. Oh, they? But you're not not Lenore. He slaps your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know. You find the crossbow, and it is used. <laughs> No, no weapon here is new. Uh, you find that a lot of things down here actually have been either scraped from the river or from the battlefields from years hence. A lot, a long period of war in Aglador and the Rovain Girdle for about about five decades or so at this point. Or not five decades, yeah, five decades, yeah. Every five years. Yeah, since <laughs> about 169, it's 223 now. Do so we so. get uh, any kind of discount for being used? Uh, you want to try to bargain that? Yeah, why not? What is your, are you, so here, your social class means nothing. It's about your ethnicity. So are you Eridane? I'm Ravanian. Ravanian, hey, all right. So uh, are you Order of Chaos Alight? Currently, I am Order. Oh, good. It's going to be an easy bargain test. So I have a 42 in bargain, so mm-hmm. 62, a 46 will do it. Nice. What is your fellowship bonus? Uh, five. Nice, so it's 20%. Nice. Nice. Darwin will pick up a, uh, un- an unrimmed shield. Does that go for the bolts as well? Yeah. Just okay. plain wooden shield, you mean? No, or an unrimmed water, you mean? Oh. By all means. Well, by all means. So, so mm-hmm. those of you who don't know, unrimmed shields, uh, you can successfully avoid one blow. By spending a fortune point after you suffer damage, you spend that fortune point, you avoid all that damage, but your shield is then destroyed. Would you need me to pick up a shield in order so you can have this one back? I mean, I reckon you can hold on to it, but I mean, yeah, if you want to buy another shield, go for it. I'll take it back. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Anything else you wish to do while you're here? Warren. Giving you my hunting belt. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, if you're simply trading equipment, buying equipment, we will pause here and we will resume with episode 43 right. of Embers here briefly. Sounds good. So, is now a good time to mention that I had an extra crossbow and nine bolts that I could have given you? Meh. Nah. Ammo. <laughs> Maybe I won't eat it. Maybe she wants one for each hand, like uh, Diablo 3.